today we will see how we can connect to Oracle database using IAB. Okay, so this is very easy. So let's see. So let's see how we can do it. Okay. So first step is we have to go to control panel. Okay, go to control panel and we have to create a BSN. Okay. And this is for Oracle database. I'm connecting Oracle database. Go to administrative tool. Open this ODBC data source. Go to system DSN. I have already created a DSN, but I will create a new one so that you can understand. Click add. So select this driver. IBM integration bus. Oracle wire protocol. You will see two kind of drivers. Sysbase wire driver and Oracle wire, but we have to select this one. Okay, click finish. Give any name. I am giving it like test DSM. Give your host. I am connecting to my local machine, so I so I will give local host. Port number is always one five two one. Give S ID of your database. Right. If you go to your database connection, go to property. This is the S ID, right? Give your S ID here. Okay. For me, it is X C. Go to advanced. Make sure that this option is selected. Okay. Enable SQL describe param. Otherwise, you will not be able to connect to the database. Now, click test connect. Enter the username, home it is system. Enter your database password. Click OK. Invalid. I think my password. Again, I have to enter. Invalid username password. Logo in the app. It is system. System. Okay, established. I was entering a wrong password. Okay, okay. Now here is the next step. After this, open your console. You have to associate. Right? How your integration will integration node will know that there is a database. Okay. So that you have to set the username and password of that database. And associate that database to your with your integration node, and that we can do using MKSI that db params command. After that, write your node name, then your DSN name, which I just created, then username of your database, then password of your database. For me, it is system one two three. Now, how you can check if connection is successfully established or not? There is a command called MKSI CVP test integration node name, then DSN name. Okay, I provided wrong DSN name. Let's say DSN. See, if you see something like that, all the details like this, right? In this tabular format, that means that your connection is successfully established now. One more step, you have to reload your execution group. Okay. See, suppose I am, I this is my application, and suppose I will deploy it to this execution group. Okay. So, I have to reload it so that changes may take the effect. Okay. Database connection changes may take the effect. Right. If suppose if this database is used in all the execution groups under this node, then we can simply reload this node. Okay, reload means stop start this node. Okay, but if on this database is only used by the application which is deployed on this execution group only, then we don't have to stop start this because this will affect the other integration servers other execution groups also okay so simply reload this one okay 
you can either you can do stop start or simply reload whatever you want to do both are same okay so it is reloaded now see here on compute node i will have to provide my dsn name okay another thing now i will be inserting some details into this table there is an employee table where employee id first name last name title all these details will be inserted okay so this mess this message flow will receive an xml which will have all these details right i have this xml this employee xml okay all these details are there so using these details i will insert into database so let's see first declare a reference it's my style of coding you can do any i mean you can write code in your style whatever way you want to write okay xml nsc dot employees i am creating a reference till employee so that it would be easy now insert into database dot schema name okay in which schema your table is there for me it is system even if you don't write schema it will work but sometimes it happens that in same table same table name i mean a table of with same name is present in two different schemas or three different schemas so it is always better to give a schema name even if i don't write schema name it will work if i mean if there is no discrepancy okay so schema name dot table name insert into table value so what are the values in ref dot id first is id okay then in ref dot first name dot first name then in ref dot last name then in, in ref dot title okay let me hit enter to make it more readable in ref dot after title we have division after division we have building dot after building we have room after room we will have supervisor side okay that's it we are done now after that we can print a value like set out put root dot json dot data dot message okay let me deploy it Okay, I'm getting successfully inserted. Let's see. There is some null, null, null because there is something wrong. test the dsn okay in ref is m exam and sc dot employee okay employees did i select the input message domain correctly yes okay 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 let me 
delete it let me delete the record delete from mp detail okay now i am selecting get if you say get then this payload will not be there okay payload will always be there in post so send it okay now let's browse this table see my details are inserted okay now similarly this is the way we can connect similarly you can write a select query here okay let me do it i so i want to select some details okay select these details basically on on the basis of id okay for that first i have to declare a row variable okay inside this row variable i can take result select star from let me copy it to save time let me give an alias where as r where r dot emp this is simple database query okay is equal to in ref dot id now after getting the details i want to display them how i can you can make this code effective or i'll just i mean i'm just the con uh, my intent is to show you the database connection that's it that i already shown you okay dot json dot data dot employee dot id okay in my emp dot result okay i will have the database record so in my database what is my id emp id similarly set let me copy paste it multiple times how many records are there Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After ID, I will have first name. Then we'll have last name. After last name, we have title. Title after we have division. division after division we have building after building we'll have room after room we'll have per files id similarly from the database just copy and just copy paste the details Save it. Deploy it. There is something wrong. Okay, it's good that we are receiving some errors. Okay, let me see what is the error. It is saying e emp underscore id is invalid identifier. Okay, so okay, this is invalid column name. Let me deploy it again. now i am able to retrieve the detail of this employee okay 
so this way we can connect to the database and we can manipulate you you can make this scenario more effective right we are already getting the details of this employee uh, okay so we don't have to basically send whole xml suppose you are sending some sending only employee id in your input okay on the basis of this you can retrieve on the basis of id only it's not necessary that this id you are getting in the payload okay mostly if this is a rest application you will be using get get and in get we don't have payload so we can go to we can add some parameters and do coding accordingly right maybe we can pass the id into header whatever way okay it's just the concept that how we can connect to a database okay so thanks guys guys for watching this video